Thank you for staying tuned. It is time for us to talk health, which is, of course, very essential. And to do justice to that, we have Dr. Adidayo Shubamu. He is a Nigerian third-generation medical doctor and healthcare management consultant with over 17 years of international healthcare business experience. Uh, he has uh, executed numerous innovative healthcare infrastructure projects and financing solutions. And today, he'll be talking about aesthetic surgeries. Uh, aesthetic surgeries is something a few people know about. And it's such a pleasure to welcome you, Dr. Dayo. How are you doing today? Um, not bad. It's a rainy day, but uh, just trying to stay <laughs> positive. All right. Uh, so for the benefit of those who don't know what we're talking about, could you just uh, define as well as describe what aesthetic uh, surgeries are about? Uh, so I think simply put, uh, aesthetic, the word aesthetic just means your looks. So to break it down to sort of uh, very simple language, aesthetic surgery is any surgery that you do to the human body to make it look better. Okay. So basically that's just it. Any surgery you do to make it better. So can you give us examples of aesthetic surgeries before we start talking about them? Um, so there are different ones. Um, I'll start with the face. So there are a lot of surgeries to sort of uh, mask the signs of aging. So mm -hmm. with simple things like uh, wrinkles on your forehead mm -hmm. or your face mm -hmm. or sagging uh, facial skin. Mm -hmm. And then for some people, you notice that, you know, when they, when they, when they put on a lot of weight, they tend to have a double chin. So you actually see like another chin. Uh, coming coming out from the back of the regular chain. Mm. Uh, if you go down uh, the body, if you do mm. things like um, increasing the breast size, mm. or for some who want to uh, reduce uh, their current breast size, mm. and then even things like, so some people have umbilical hernias, and how that presents is they seem to have a very big uh, belly, belly button. button. Yeah. That can easily be corrected by mm. surgery. Uh, so, there's basically no part of the body that can be worked on to sort of improve the appearance. Hmm. Okay, so um, the, many folks don't know that there are actually, as you said, different things that can be done to enhance the body. And not just even externally, but uh, certain parts of the body, say, for example, uh, restructuring of the vagina and all the such stuff. Uh, but let's um, uh, talk about uh, th these different examples of aesthetic surgeries you've mentioned. An average Nigerian, when you mention something that has to do with beauty, they're interested. But the moment you mention uh, going under the knife, uh, there's usually that hesitation. Uh, so uh, for someone who is probably considering going under the knife, but is probably afraid of all the complications that have been heard of all, of the, all over the world, uh, you as a doctor, for example, let's assume that you're trying to convince or have a conversation with a patient. Uh, what would you tell the patient about the benefits of aesthetic surgeries? Um, so the thing about uh, the society we live in now is um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of focus on how people look. And if you look at social media and the news generally, you see a growing trend in body shaming. So people uh, make jests and try to ridicule people based on how they look. Yeah, that's And true. the thing about uh, aesthetic surgery is you can... So if I, if I look at the people that I've met along the way and advised, you know, the ones that are sort of harder to manage are... So you now get disfigured from getting an accident. You know, mm. if you were born with something, um, I mean, even though it might be difficult living with it, but you mm. would agree with me that it would be much more worse than somebody who looked okay, and all of a sudden, because of an accident or an illness, you're now disfigured. And it comes with all sorts of uh, pressures. Beyond the body shaming, uh, there's also, most times, uh, a lack of self-esteem in the individual. And in extreme cases, it leads to depression. So you will get suicidal. Hmm. So in advising a patient, what I'll say is, um, need to sort of live in shame or live in pain. Right? Hmm. Depending on what it is, hmm. uh, yeah. but then having said that, um, like you mentioned earlier on, any surgery also comes with risks. So as a professional, if somebody comes to me, 
to say, hey, I, I want to do, let's just say, uh, a, a tummy tuck. I want to reduce um, the fat in my abdomen. Hmm. Uh, so the professional thing to do is to evaluate the person, hmm. yeah? Because, for example, if you're overweight or you had pre-existing uh, conditions like yeah. diabetes or, or hypertension, you know, those will be challenges, especially if you're going to now go under anesthesia. So depending, so, so there has to be a full sort of investigation and workup pre-surgery to assess. Hmm. Is it going to be a high-risk surgery? Is it going to be low risk? And if it's hmm. high risk, depending on what the risk is, hmm. then the surgery ideally should be done at that time. And I'll give you an example. So hmm. if somebody comes for a tummy tuck and okay. while investigating, you, you see that the person is diabetic okay. and then poorly controlled, which means that the sugar level is just too excessive, okay. then obviously the person has to go on some therapy hmm. to correct that sugar balance before they go under the knife. Okay. Same thing with being hypertensive. Your okay. blood pressure has to be corrected, stabilized before you go under surgery. To reduce the risk. Uh, so okay. yes, in a nutshell, those are the kind of considerations uh, you need to think about. Okay. On, Another thing that any is... Kind of oh, okay. Another thing that is usually being considered is the cost. Um, some people say aesthetic mm -hmm. surgeries actually cost a lot. Uh, do you agree with that? And uh, on average, what's the cost uh, implication like? Um, yes, um, aesthetic surgery is, is expensive. Uh, I think the reason why is it takes a, a particular skill set okay. to do the surgeries. So you need to, as long as you want to do it the right way, I mean, in any profession you have quacks, but if you want to do it the right way, you need to see a plastic surgeon. Hmm. Uh, so if it's somebody who has a medical degree and has hmm. gone further to subspecialize in plastic surgery, so highly skilled person, you also want somebody who's experienced because hmm. um, you get better the more you do things. So if I was a patient, I wanted to do a tummy talk mm. and ask my surgeon, how many have you done? And he says, oh, in the last five years, I've only done one. I mean, mm. I personally wouldn't uh, patronize that, that, that surgeon. Okay. Um, so in terms of cost, yes, it is expensive. Um, so, so let's talk about a tummy talk. How much would it cost? Well, I will say it depends on where you're doing it. Mm. Um, years ago, you had to go abroad to do it. But mm. um, right now in Nigeria, you have there quite a many number surgeons of plastic surgeons. It. That's true. Some have trained locally, some have trained abroad, mm -hmm. decided to move home. So obviously, it's a lucrative practice. Um, mm -hmm. So to do in Nigeria, a tummy talk, from what I see, uh, um, I think starting from about a million to, say, two million naira, you can do it. Uh, okay. If you want to do it abroad, I think it depends on where you want to go. Um, so if you go to North America, Okay. That really is the most expensive place to do it. And okay. there, we'll be talking about uh, anything from about $10,000 uh, okay. upwards. Uh, if you want to do it in India, so India is the price leader. What that simply means is yeah. because of the scale and the number of surgeries they do, then they're able to provide the cost it at is usually the best rate higher. possible. Nobody can beat them on price. Yeah, uh, that's so true. to do it in India, it will probably be just about the price uh, you do it in Nigeria or even slightly cheaper. Okay, okay. Of course, so, um, um, Dr. Other emerging. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Dyer, I, I just wanted to quickly ask this before we say goodbye because we have to really round this up now. Um, just a quick one. People talk about the fact that when you get plastic surgery, you also have to maintain it. Is it true? Of course. Um, you, that's so, very you, true. You, when you get it and once, be ready to. One example is. Okay. The most common example is people who do weight loss surgery. So basically, you use the size of the stomach, so the person eats less, and as a result, the person loses weight. Okay. But the point is, if you lose weight and you're still eating unhealthy, and you're still the surgery doesn't help at all. The weight hmm. is going to come back. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Dyer. Thank you so much for your time. It's uh, been quite enlightening, especially for those who have interest in uh, going under the knife. Thank you so much.